here's a postnatal class that you can start when you're feeling ready postnatally that means when you've got some energy um, and your muscles feel like they're ready to start getting strengthened but don't rush back into exercise um, it is important to do exercise for your mental well-being and to get your muscles strong and you do need to strengthen them but those first few weeks rest is also really important and um, just getting to know your baby um, allowing your body to recover from um, the delivery and carrying that baby for so long. Um, those first few weeks, you can think about your pelvic floor exercises. You can watch my pelvic floor video. Um, you can think about activating your lower abdominals just when you're standing or sitting when you're um, feeding the baby, just squeezing the lower tummy muscles, avoiding pulling in too much up here so your belly button wants to stay in the same, same place rather than pulling upwards. And it just draws back towards the spine. Um, so just be aware that if you're doing too much, your body will tell you, and you'll probably notice a change in colour in the vaginal bleeding, or it might be heavier. Um, also, you just feel a lot more tired afterwards. So start off thinking about walking in those first few weeks, short distances, um, and then gradually build up. Think about your posture when you're walking, your posture as you're standing. Post, um, when you're postnatal, we tend to hold the baby in front and slump, and our postures change over time. Um, if you're feeding and you're looking at the baby all the time, then you get this downward posture coming on. So just thinking about shoulders backwards and relaxed, um, pelvis in a neutral position, so finding um, not too slumped forwards, not too far back, but just a neutral position. And thinking about pelvic floor posture and gentle walking in those first few weeks is probably all you need to be doing. When you feel ready to start doing some exercises from about three weeks onwards, you can start doing this video. But if any particular exercises hurt or feel too difficult to do, then just don't do them. Have a rest for that time that I'm doing the exercise and then join in with the next one. Um, so I'm going to start with doing a few warm-up exercises and then we'll do some stretches and then look at some mat exercises. You don't need to have a mat if you've got a nice squishy carpet, that will do. Um, and you might want a pillow for your head as well. So, in a standing position, we're just going to have a look at getting the, doing some pelvic tilting. So you're bending your knees, so your feet are facing forward, and they're hip width apart, knees hip width apart, and they bend over your toes. Don't let them roll inwards, okay? And then hands on your hips, and without moving your shoulders or your head, we're doing some pelvic tilting, tucking your tailbone under, pushing your pubic bone forward, and letting it go. So I stand sideways on so you can see what I'm doing. Just tucking under, squeeze your pelvic floor in as you tuck under, let it go. Squeeze it in as you let, tuck forward and then let go. So you can do some pelvic floor, add your pelvic floor into all these exercises if you like. So tucking the tailbone under and letting it go. So it's just, as you're doing this, you'll feel it start to work your glutes, the bottom, and it starts to activate these lower abdominals. So again, this exercise you could be doing in those first three weeks when you're standing, when you're holding the baby. And with these exercises, most of these exercises can be done holding your baby, so you can be doing it now. Um, <clears throat> when you're on your mat, having them on your hips, and when you're on your all fours, having them looking up at you, giggling at you. So, just think about rocking as well, coming side to side. As you put all your weight onto one leg, tuck your tailbone under, and you'll feel your glute muscles activate to support you. So you might have your baby in front of you now, or you might just want to have your hands on your hips. So. Just feeling the weight go into your, your hip, as you activate your hip, you're feeling that muscle working. And if you want to make it a bit harder, you can lift the heel to your bottom and the other side. So you're doing heel flicks, keeping that knee pointing downwards towards the mat. So you're feeling a stretch down through the quads muscles. You can add a bit of a knee bend if you like. And then weight onto the one hip as you flip back. But again, this might be a progressive exercise after you've felt like you're stronger from the other exercises. Again, when you're squatting, try and keep your pelvis in a neutral position rather than letting your bottom stick out as you're going down. You don't have to go very low. And keeping your knees over your toes, don't let them roll inwards. Okay, so stretching, we're going to reach up as tall as you can. If you want to go up into your toes, you can go up on your toes as well and reach even further. Just feel that stretch throughout your whole body. We're going to roll down towards our toes. Don't do this if your back really hurts. But um, tucking your chin downwards first, and we're going to follow like, each level of your spine one by one. So rolling down, 
I'm going to walk my hands on my legs to show you what you can do if your back feels a little bit unstable. And tuck that lower tummy in as you're rolling down to support your spine. Once you're down, um, keep your knees slightly bent. You don't have to have straight legs. And however far you've got, it doesn't matter. You're just going to relax in that position. And with each out breath, feeling yourself feel a little bit further. Breathing into your ribs and then relaxing further. If you straighten your legs, you'll just feel the tightness behind the back of your knees. Where it's bending and you get a stretch on the whole body. On your next out breath, you're going to walk back up. Keeping that lower tummy muscles engaged. Reaching up onto your toes as high as you can go. And then heels down, arms down, chin down, rolling each level of your spine. One by one, all the way down. You can walk your hands down or just roll down. Keeping that lower tummy engaged to support your spine. And knees slightly bent and just breathing into that position. If it's too much to hold yourself there, you can put your hands on your knees or you have a block in front of you that you lean on. In your next out breath, we're going to walk ourselves back up again. Okay, so some a neck stretch, so hands behind your back. Relax shoulders backwards and downwards. Tuck your chin back so your ears are over your shoulders. And having your ears over your shoulders is a really good posture um, tip anyway. So when you're doing things around the house when you're walking, Try not to stick your, tuck your chin out. Take your ear to your shoulder and feel that gentle stretch in your neck. And then turning your chin to your shoulder. Back to the middle, ear to your other shoulder. And turning your chin to your shoulder. And back up again. With your hands clasped still, just try lifting your hands up towards the ceiling and feeling that stretch in the front of your chest. If you push your chest out a little bit more, you'll feel it right across here. Again, a place that gets really tight when you're holding a baby a lot. And if you want to, you can either stay like that, or if you feel able to, you can tuck your tummy in as you roll down towards the floor, keeping your head down and your hands up towards the ceiling to get even more stretch. And then back up again. So we're going to do a side stretch, so reaching up, take one arm down, reaching as high as you can with the other hand, starting to lower down to one side. If you want to, you can look up at your hand if your balance is good. And then breathing out into that stretch, reaching as far down to the floor with your one hand that you can. And then back up again on the out breath. And then breathing out and lowering down, reaching up to the ceiling with one hand, down to the floor with the other hand. And then on your next out breath, we're going to roll back up again. You can repeat that, either the same, or you can bring that top arm over as well. Nice breath out in this position. Breathe out as you come back up. And breathe out as you go down. Top hand over. These side muscles get really tight carrying babies. And breathe out as you come back up. Another nice stretch you can do is hands are clasped in front of you and just dropping your head down, feel that stretch over your, across your shoulder blades. So you're trying to reach the other side of the room with your hands. Okay, so we're going to come down to the mat. <clears throat> so if you lie on your back to start with, if you've got the baby, they can sit on your um, on your pelvis here. I've got a head for my a pillow for my head, but you don't have to have that. And with my um, feet shoulder width apart or hip width apart, I'm going to keep my hands on my hips and a neutral pelvis. So neutral pelvis means I'm not pushing my back flat into the mat. I've got a tiny little gap 
but not a big gap, okay? So you've got a nice level pelvis here between your hips and the pubic bone. Okay, and I'm gonna have, have my hands on there so I know I'm not rocking or moving. And I'm going to control one leg sliding away while I've got my hands on my hips. And I'm gonna bring that really slowly back up again. So this is your starting position, okay, a level one really. Again, make sure that your tummy's not arching, you're not pushing your tummy out as you're doing this, and you're just keeping your pelvis really still. And you should be able to feel the muscle just inside your pelvis stabilizing you, your transverse abdominals. Try and breathe through these exercises. So it might be that you breathe out as you move your leg down, and you breathe out as you move it back up again. So breathing out on each movement is a really good way of controlling your breathing and making sure that you're not muscle holding, that you're actually just contracting the muscle properly rather than bracing it. So if that's too easy and you want to progress, then you can progress to a knee lift. Again, you want to make sure that your pelvis stays in, is, is totally still. So if one hip, the opposite hip moves as you lift your leg, then you've lost control. And if that arch in your back starts to get bigger, you've lost control. So I'm just slowly moving the leg up and then slowly moving it down. So it's really important that movements are nice and slow because they're controlled. The core muscles are all about control rather than power. <clears throat> and again, to progress this exercise, if you want to make it a bit harder, but again, this is all step, step, step by step as you gain control. Just move your feet away further from you so that you've got a further lever to come up. And if, again, at this point, you notice your upper hip, hip is starting to shake, then you've gone too far. Come back a bit. And make sure that your tummy is not bulging again as you're doing it. So that's your first exercise. Then bringing your feet together. Again, keeping that pelvis flat. You're going to roll halfway towards the floor, back to the middle, roll out the other way, and back to the middle. If this really hurts, if you've got disc problems or back problems, um, then just be aware of not going to pain. So just do a little way, but it can be just a few degrees if you want to. But what we're doing is feeling it in your tummy muscles as you bring your knees back up, and then you're slowly lowering your knees with control and bringing them back with control. And if, you're, if you feel fine, you can obviously go a little bit further, some mobility in your back, but again, if you've got back problems, just stay within um, pain limits, so don't go to pain. Okay, now feet hip width apart again, and try to bring your feet as close to your bottom as you can. We're going to do a bridge now, I'm going to get rid of my pillow, otherwise your neck tends to get a little bit too squashed. And we're going to lift our bottom into the air, keeping our feet on the floor, but we're rolling up. So we're going to roll your pelvis back, pelvic floor leads, okay, squeeze the pelvic floor in, take your coccyx, your tailbone off the mat, and you're rolling up, almost with each level of your spine coming up one by one until your ribs are off and your bottom is nice and high. Let your neck grow longer, and then we're going to roll down, ribs first, and then your lower spine, lumbar spine, coming down. Trying to feel each level touching the floor one by one until your tailbone touches the floor. If you've got very curved spine like I do, then you might find that the coccyx hits the floor at the same time as the rest of the lumbar spine. But you can really try as you come down, really picturing each, like imagine it's a string of pearls and each pearl is touching the floor one by one as it lowers down. Try and keep your knees staying hip width apart the whole way through the exercise. They'll, tempt, they'll want to come together and touch and just keeping them steady and not wobbling too much is really, really important. So, if you want to make this harder, just hold it up for longer. Really squeeze that bottom up and then coming down. Again, breathing out as you roll up and breathing out as you roll down. 
So I'm just going to bring my knees to my chest for a stretch, spine. Um, you'll, depending on what your spine anatomy is, you might find it's easy, and your knees come right up to your chest, or you might find it a bit stiffer. Just do what you can. You can go side to side if you like. And then the next exercise, we're going to have feet, again, hip width apart on the mat. We're going to do a little bit of a crunch here, but just be aware if you've got rectus diastasis um, or you've got any, if you've had a cesarean section, just be really careful with this. You're just putting a little bit of effort in, okay? So when you're going to put your hands down, oh, you can have your hands down on your side, or I'm going to put mine just behind my, my head, but with my fingertips touching my lower part of my neck near my shoulders, just give my back, my neck some support. So before you start this, you've got to think pelvic floor must uh, contract first. So you zip your pelvic floor in from the back passage towards the front. You're flattening your back, so you're flattening that, um, that arch that's on your, on your back and rolling that pelvis backwards. And then we're going to lift the head a little bit, okay? And you should feel the abdominals contracting. Hold it for a few seconds and roll back down, keeping that control and then you can let go of everything. So pelvic floor in, tilt the pelvis back, roll the head up and you can come just up as far as your chin is touching, is look, you're looking at your knees ahead. So you're just bringing your head up. You don't need to bring your shoulders off the floor, okay? Just causes downward pressure that can lead towards prolapse. So tilting your pelvis back, pelvic floor squeezing in and rolling up. You should be able to see your tummy muscles from here. And if you've noticed that your tummy's bulging, then you've gone too far, you've put too much effort in. So your tummy muscles should stay flat the whole way through the exercise. Or I should say they should stay the same as they are at the beginning of the exercise. So at the beginning of the exercise, when you tilt your pelvis back, that's where your tummy muscles are staying. So if you put one hand on your tummy and roll up, that should stay at the same position. It shouldn't push out. If you're finding it pushes out too much, then you can hold the muscles together with your hands clasped and then do a little bit of a head lift in that position with them supported. Holding for a few seconds and then rolling down. If it's too hard, don't do it. It's not the most important of exercise, but it does get the muscles zipping together to come up. So pelvic floor in, roll the pelvis back and lift your head up. Hold it for a few seconds and then roll down. Try and breathe out as you roll up. And then breathe out as you roll down. Okay, a nice stretch in this position is to have your legs straight, your arms above your head, and try and reach towards opposite ends of the room with your heels going one direction and your fingertips going the other direction. I clasp my hands just to um, help as well. And you're just being a stretch throughout your whole body. It feels really nice. It's pretty long. <laughs> Again, take some nice deep breaths in this position to feel the stretching. We're going to roll onto our side and use some clams. So again, you might want a pillow for this one. So with the clams, we're looking at the glutes and um, strengthening that. So the few pointers are get your top hip up in front of your bottom hip. So that means you might have to roll your hip forward. You want to make sure your top hip is directly stacked above your bottom hip. So you don't want to be arch let, letting that arch go. Okay, so try and maintain a tiny arch underneath your waist, otherwise you'll find the top hip comes forward and it's not directly over the bottom hip. So keep your hips stacked on top of each other, slightly rolled forward, and tailbone tucked under so you're finding that neutral pelvis. And then we're going to separate the knees, keeping the heels together. Now for me, I can only get that far if my feet are touching the floor, so I need to lift my feet a little bit and then separate, and then I get a little bit more range and I can feel that in the muscle in my bottom. So it's really important you feel this in your gluteus medius. So if you come up your side of your leg and so you feel your knobbly hip bone, just slide just behind there. So it's probably on your nipple line and you should feel that muscle bulging as you separate your knees and then coming back down again. Try and separate as you breathe out and try and come back down again as you breathe out. Now, if you're feeling it in this muscle down the side of your leg, that's your IT band. We don't want to feel it there. We want to feel it in the glutes. Um, and it can cause more damage if you're strengthening your IT band. So don't do it unless you can feel it in the glutes. You might need to bring your knees up. You might need to take them back a little bit. You might need to roll your hip forward a lot more, if you've got, particularly if you've got big, pel um, big hips. So, and you might need to bring your feet off the floor a little bit more. So you want to feel it right there in the bottom. When it starts to get tight, 
the lactic acid stores in it, you'll have to tap the bottom to release that lactic acid. Okay, a progression of this one is to have your bottom knee bent and your top leg straight. But your top leg again, bringing your hips stacked above each other, bringing that top hip rolled forward and taking that leg upwards and slightly backwards so you can just see your toes. And again, feeling it in your bottom and not the side of your leg too much. And if you're finding you're only lifting it a little bit, that's normal because any higher, I've just lost my waist, okay? So it's making sure you maintain your waist. You might want to just have your hand underneath your waist to make sure you're not squashing as you come up. And don't let this, your leg start to venture forwards because you'll just feel it inside of your leg. So you're feeling it in your bottom. If you're starting to get tired and you're compensating, give it a tap, that's probably enough anyway. You can stay doing it with your knees bent to, to start with and progress to it being the leg straight. So on to your other side. So lifting, so top, top hip stacked over the bottom, roll forward a little bit, tailbone tucked under, and separating your knees, heels slightly off the floor. So you should feel you're not sticking your bottom out, you're tucking it under. You might want to lift your heels more, you want to bring your knees forward or backwards, but you're finding your nickel line and you should feel that muscle bulging there. And keep it bulging the whole way down. Don't let it go when you get to the air and, and just drop your knee back together. It's slow separation of your knees outwards and slow, slowly bringing it back down again. Keep breathing, don't hold your breath. And if it starts to get tight and you can't do any more, just have a rest, give your bottom a tap, and have a rest and start again. And then the progression exercise is to have your legs straight, longer lever, and again, top hip roll forward, making sure you've got a waist, so I'm gonna put my hand under my waist to make sure it stays there. And I'm just lifting my leg as far as I can go without my waist dropping. And I'm turning my toes slightly towards the ceiling, and I'm lifting my toes and my, my heel slightly backwards so that I can only see my toes really from where I am. Feeling it in your bottom and not the side of your legs. And when you're feeling tired, you're just going to give your bottom a tap out just to get rid of the lactic acid, otherwise it can give you tension in there for the rest of the day. So, coming onto your hands and knees, you can have your baby in front of you if you want at the moment. And we're going to have knees shoulder width apart and your hands below your shoulders shoulder width apart. And we're just arching your back looking down and then you drop your back down looking up. So I stretch this one, so you're stretching up, pushing the ground away from you to push your chest away from the mat, and then dropping down and looking up. And then we're arching again. And dropping down. Just turning your fingers inwards so that your heels and your hand are shoulder width apart and your hands are facing, your, toe, your fingertips are facing inwards, toes are pointed underneath towards your shins, and bend your elbows a little bit, okay? And I want you to think about pushing your chest away from the mat, so don't sink down, we just really push those, those shoulder blades away from each other, okay? And in this position, we're gonna do, do some breathing. So again, bring your ears in line with your shoulders, so you're tucking your chin back, looking straight down at the mat. And we're gonna breathe in for four seconds, into the ribs, and then out for eight. Keeping your pelvis neutral, so don't, don't let your bottom stick out. You'll feel your lower abdominals kicking in and breathe in. And all the way out. Keeping your chin tucked in, keeping the pelvis neutral. And in. You should feel your shoulders having to work really hard. And this is and all the way out. 
Really good for your shoulder stability. And relax. Now I'm going to come down onto our elbows, our forearms. So our elbows are shoulder width apart. My hands are face down on the mat, are facing forward. I'm pushing into my hands. I'm also pushing my shoulder blades away from each other, pushing my chest away from the mat. I'm tucking my chin in and I'm keeping my pelvis neutral again and looking straight ahead of me. And I'm going to breathe in and all the way out. And in. And all the way out. And one more in. And all the way out. And relax. So, come into a sitting position and you're going to do some stretches. So with one leg out in front of you, cross your other foot over by next to the knee. You're going to grab the outside of the knee and pull it towards your opposite shoulder to feel a stretch down the side of your leg and into your hip. And if you want to increase the stretch, you can bring your head down. And if you want to increase it even more, try and bring your head towards the knee so you're hugging that knee. And again, relaxing. Relax your shoulders. Just breathe. And swapping over. So cross your foot at the knee, bring your clasp your hands around the outside of your knee, bring your knee to the opposite shoulder. You want to feel a nice stretch up here. If you feel like you're really flexible and you want to add a rotation to your body, you can as well. So swapping feet again, this time we're letting your foot sit on top of your knee with your knee dropping out to the side and you're going to lean your body forward so you're taking your head towards your foot and you might need to sit on a cushion for this if you're really slumped back um, or a couple of pillows and while you're doing this stretch you can give your foot a nice massage, a bit of pampering and you should be feeling this stretch in your hip region and probably inside and inside your inner thigh as well. And then swap legs. So pop your foot on top of the knee. Really massaging that foot. <laughs> Let your knee drop out to the side and, and take your head forward. Almost taking your head towards your, your, your mid shin or your foot. Um, we'll just do one with your legs out to the side, okay, depending on if you've had pubic pain or anything, you might want to take, have your feet a bit close to each other or take them wider, and um, just going to reach up, again you might be wanting to sit on a pillow to help you support your pelvis here, and then rolling down your hands in front of you, knees can be slightly bent, they don't have to always be straight, that just adds stretch behind the knee, and just breathing in and relaxing out, and then and all the way out. And in. And out. As you come back up again. So, that's the end of my exercises. Um, see how you feel as to whether you want to do them every few days um, or just once a week or what you can, what you can manage.